In this question, we're given a function which describes the approximate length of the day in Galway, measured in hours from sunrise to sunset. And um, this function, as you can see, is a sine function, where t is the variable. And to do this question, you don't need to know anything really about the length of days throughout the year. Uh, just the mathematics will get you through it. So you do need to know a thing or two about uh, functions and derivatives, however. So our function is f of t is 12.25 plus 4.75 sine of 2 pi over 365t, where t is the number of days after March 21st, and 2 pi over 365t is expressed in radians. Find the length of the day in Galway on June the 5th, 76 days after March 21st. Okay, so what we need to do is get f of 76, just substitute it in. So that would be 12.25 plus 4.75 times sine, open up my bracket, put in my fraction. We have 2 pi times 76 on the top, and on the bottom we have 365, and then close the bracket. Um, why is 76 on the top? Because 76 could be written as 76 over 1 and the 2 pi will be multiplied by the 76, and the 365 will be multiplied by the 1. So we don't really need to multiply by the 1. Right, so we just punch all that into the calculator, and what we get is 16.83726. Now give your answer in hours and minutes correct to the nearest minute. So what we have is 16.837 hours. We need to find out what 0 0.83726 hours is in terms of minutes. So let's multiply it by 60. And we get 50.2356. So we have we have 16 hours, 50 minutes. And another piece of work here is going to take the um, 0 0.2356 of a minute and multiply it by 60 to get it in seconds. Well, we don't really need to because we know it's going to be closer to uh, 50 minutes. If we were asked for seconds as well, that's what we would do uh, to find it. So what we have is fine. Uh, we round 50.23 down to the nearest minute. And we have 16 hours and 50 minutes. That's how long the day is on June the 5th. Okay, next question. Find a date on which the length of the day in Galway is approximately 15 hours. Well, we're putting 15 in as the result and we're trying to solve for t. So let's just say 15 is the result and 12.25 plus 4.75 sine 2 pi t over 365 uh, and now we're solving for t okay so that's what we're doing and then we should get the date uh, right so how do we do this well let's take the 12.25 to the left first so 15 minus 12.25 that's going to be equal to 4.75 times sine of this fraction. Uh, so that gives us 2.75. Let's divide across by 4.75 as well. And what we're left with then is just sine of this fraction. And now we can get the inverse sine of 2.75 and 4.75 on the bottom. Now remember they said that it was in radians so you need to convert your calculator to radians if it isn't already set up like that and it's usually in the setup section of your calculator. So we want to get this and we get 0 0.6174 and that's to four decimal places. That means that uh, 2 pi t over 365 is equal to 0 
So let's multiply across by 365. And while we're at it, let's divide across by 2 pi on both sides. So that we're left with t. And then we calculate all that on the calculator. And we get 35.8657 or 35.87. So we'll say that t is approximately 36 days. Now, t is the number of days after March 21st. And there are 31 days in March. Okay, so it is important to know that much. How do I know that? Well, there's an old rhyme that goes, 30 days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest of 31, except February, which is 28. So uh, March is not one of those four months. So that means March is 31 days. So 10 days after, uh, when T is 10, uh, we have March 31. So then if we add on, uh, what else do we need to add on? 26 days, we get to uh, April uh, 26th. So the answer that we're looking for is uh, April 26th. By the way, there is another answer to this question, but we're only looking for one particular date. It says find a date. So one was sufficient. But just to explain, uh, remember that when you get the sine inverse, that there are two angles that would give you this positive ratio, 2.75 over 4.75. And that because it's positive, it must be in one of these two quadrants, uh, the first and second quadrants, as we call them. We got a result which was 0 0.6174 radians, which is smaller than 90 degrees, uh, because one one radian is about 60 degrees, so it's less than one radian. So we got a result which was in the first quadrant, but there would have been a result which was also in the second quadrant. Uh, because if you think about it, the days get longer until June 21st or thereabouts. And then they're going to get shorter again, so it'll be 15 hours again uh, later on in the, in the year. So it'll, uh, as it's getting shorter again. So had I chosen the other value, I probably would have got the result after June 21st when it becomes 15 hours again. But one answer was, was sufficient. Uh, find f dash of t, the derivative of f of t. Okay, so let's write out the function again first, and then we'll get its derivative. So f of t. So now we'll get f dash of t. And the 12.25 will go to 0. So it just disappears. The 4.75 is a coefficient, so that'll stay. Uh, sine goes to cosine. But I need to use the chain rule here. So it'll be cosine of everything inside. Uh, and then we multiply by the derivative of what's in the brackets. So the derivative of what's in the brackets will be 2 pi over 365. So to tidy that up, you would usually go 4.75 uh, times 2 pi over 365 uh, cosine 2 pi t over 365. It's just usually a, a convention to put the trigonometric function at the end. It's not perhaps necessary to get the full marks in this, but it's just neater. Okay, so hence or otherwise, find the length of the longest day. Okay, let's scroll down a wee bit, give ourselves some room to write our answer. Um, okay, I just need the derivative for this. So there's my derivative. To find the length of the longest day, this is a function where I need to find the max. So you differentiate and make it equal to zero. So let's take our derivative, make it equal to zero, and that means that 4.75 times 2 pi over 365 cos 2 pi t over 365 is equal to zero. If you think about it, we have two factors here. We have this factor on the left, and we have another factor here on the right. So all I need to do is solve cos 2 pi t over 365 equal to zero. What I need to do is find what angle. Now again, we're in radians here. So what radian measure 
would give uh, cosine of the angle would be 0. Well, isn't it pi over 2, 90 degrees? Uh, if we get cos of 90, we get 0, or cos of pi over 2. So just to write mathematically, we go cos inverse of 0 is equal to 2 pi t over 365. Therefore, uh, what I'm going to say here is pi over 2 is equal to 2 pi t over 365. So these pi's cancel. We now can cross multiply. So what do we get? We get 365 is equal to 4 times t. Therefore, 365 over 4 is equal to t. So what's 365 divided by 4? 91.25. OK, now we need to find the length of the longest day in Galway. So we know when the longest day of Galway. It's 91.25 days after March 21st. So let's uh, approximate to the nearest whole number. Substitute that into my function and we'll get the length of the day. So now we get f of 91 is 12.25 plus 4.75 sine of 2 pi times 91 all over 365. Close my bracket and we get 16.9999 so we'll approximate that to 17 hours, uh, which would be the length of the longest day in Galway, according to the formula. Now, finally, use integration to find the average length of the day in Galway over the six months from March 21st to September 21st. That's 184 days. Give your answer in hours and minutes, correct to the nearest minute. Okay, so the average length of the day formula is uh, 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of the function f of x dx, where you have an x, y axis, uh, you have two points a and b, and you have some function. Then what we're really looking for is the average height of the function between those two x-coordinates, a and b, between the two limits. So in our case, uh, b minus a is from 184 uh, minus 0. So we have 1 over 184 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 184 of my function, which is 12.25 plus 4.75 sine 2 pi t all over 365 and that's with respect to t is my variable so that gives me 1 over 184 times now I'll integrate this and 12.25 when I integrate becomes 12.25 t uh, the 4.75 will remain sine will become minus cos uh, it'll be same thing inside the brackets, but this time we will divide that term by the derivative of what's in the brackets, so that would be 2 pi over 365. And then we get, we just close our bracket there. So it's kind of like the chain rule worked backwards when we are integrating there. OK, so I then need to sub in my limits, which goes from 0 to 184. So writing all that out, that is 1 over 184 times 12.25 times 184. And it's, let's put in the minus here, minus 4.75. Uh, and let's divide by 2 pi over 365. So we're dividing by 2 pi and multiplying by 365, so it's a good way of doing that division. Uh, and then we have a cosine of 2 pi by 184 all over 365. 
minus 1 over 184, and we need to sub in 0. Well, 12.25 times 0 is still going to be 0. And cosine of a bunch of stuff times 0 is go still going to be the same as cosine 0. And we know that cosine of 0 is 1. So I'm just going to get minus 4.75 times 365 over 2 pi. And we'll just put in a note, cosine of 0 equal to 1. So the examiner knows why we've dropped it. Okay, now I just need to punch all of that into my calculator. And what I get is 1 over 184 times 2254 plus 275.84 minus 1 over 184 times minus 275.93 and if we work that out on the calculator, we get 13.75 plus, because the minus and the minus give us a plus, uh, 1.5, which is 15.25. So that is 15 hours and one quarter of an hour, which would be 15 minutes. So that is the average length of a day over those six months. And that is the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.